everybody! Welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA. This is the fifth grade edition, so if you're a fifth grader, fifth grade teacher, a parent of a fifth grader, um, somebody tutoring a fifth grader, you are at the right spot. Today we're working on this standard right here. This is maths.5.mbt.2.6. That is a fancy code for multi-digit division, long division, which is what we're going to be doing today. Um, you'll also see a little bit of the partial products method, partial quotients, sorry, partial quotients method. Um, before we begin, just remember that when we are doing multi-digit division, we need to remember to divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. Um, one way that I've seen teachers do this is by using the silly acronym, Dangerous Monkeys Swipe Bananas. So remember to watch out for those dangerous monkeys out there. Um, hopefully they don't creep up on us during this episode, but we will see. So if not, don't worry, never fear. I'm here. So without further ado, let me teach you. All right, all right. Example one, what is the value of the expression? 3,690 divided by 15. Um, I'm going to use long division today, so dangerous monkeys will be swiping the bananas. Um, also known as divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Just a note, heads up for you, teachers and parents and students. For this standard, you will see four digits, up to four digits, divided by up to two digits. It should not go any higher than four divided by two for fifth grade. Okay. So 15 going into 3,690. How many times does 15 go into three? You can't do that, so I'm gonna put an X. 15 does go into 36 twice. Two times 15 is 30. Subtract, and we have six. For our banana, we bring down the nine. 15 goes into 69, well, it goes into 30 twice, so it would go into 60 four times. Four times 15 is 60. Subtract, we get 9 and bring down the 0. And so if it goes into 60, if it goes into 30 twice and 60 four times, then it should be 15 times 6 equals 90. That's 30. And then we have 90. Yes, so 6. 6 times 15. Then we subtract and we get zero. Okay. Now you could use multiplication to check this answer. I would if we had enough time for this video. Hang on, pause, let me check it. I'm back. <laughs> and I checked my work. I punched in, not punched in, but I calculated 246 times 15. 246 times 15. I got 3,690. You can check my work if you want by pausing this video, but it's right. But my answer that goes inside the box is 246. For you, this would be an equation editor, so you would go 2, 4, 6, move on. All right, we're on example 2. It says drag the numbers to the correct boxes to solve the division problem using the partial quotients method. So this is where you need to be familiar with the partial quotients method. I know for me, I am more inclined to use the regular old-fashioned standard long division way um, but you do need to be familiar with this just in case something similar to this pops up on your FSA test so <clears throat> this is the only kind of way that I would that I could see how they would force you into the partial quotients method would be this this way so let's go over it <clears throat> okay so this student does, how many times is 16? They gotta pull something kinda easy out. We're taking part of the quotient. So this person multiplied 16 times 200, which would be 32,000. I know that because 16 times two is 32, and then I added two zeros. Then when they subtracted, they would do two minus two is two, two minus zero is two, three minus zero is three, 9 minus 7 is, sorry, 9 minus 2 is 7, and 4 minus 3 equals 1. So that matches up. So this would go here. Okay. Now, 
They multiplied 16 100 times to get this part. So 16 times 100 would be 1600. When we subtract, you would get 132. And now they did six, whoops, and so this would go right here. And now 16 times eight, I'm not sure off the top of my head, so I'm gonna do my work out here. That's 48. Eight times one is eight, plus four is 12, so 128. So this would go here. And then you would get a remainder of four. So adding these up, 200 plus 100 plus 8 would be 308 with a remainder of 4. That is the way, oops, and the 4 would go here. That is a way that I know that they could force you into a partial quotients method. So just be familiar with it. It's okay to have long division be your go-to, but be familiar with the partial quotients way as well. All right, guys, this is example 3. It says select all the expressions that have a value of 32. So that means that we need to divide all of these expressions out and see if our equate, our, sorry, not our equation, if our quotient equals 32. And I know I just lost some of you. Some of you just went, what? I'm not doing that. Okay. That's what hard work is, guys. That's how you get success. You got to work hard. That's how you do it. Um, but I don't want to spend five minutes of your time with you just watching me solve it out. So what I'm going to do is cut here, work out all the problems on the board, cut back so you can see that I did the work too, and if I'm doing the work, should you be doing the work? Oh, you betcha. Okay. So it took me approximately three minutes to solve all of these out, um, and that's me being pretty quick at math. So yes, it does take time. And I tell you what, since your test is going to be time for most of you, unless you have special accommodations, um, this would be a problem that I might say, oh, I know how to do this, but I'm going to wait until after I finish all the other problems. Um, because this is a one that takes time, and you probably are going to be timed on the test. So you want to make sure that you get it right, that you have enough time. So 816 divided by 24, I got 34, so no. 1024 divided by 32, I got 32, yes. 416 divided by 13, I got 32, yes. 352 divided by 16, I got 22, no. 736 divided by 32, I got 23, no. Okay, so you have to get marked all of the correct answers in order to receive the credit. Example four, which expression could be used to find the quotient of 864 divided by 24? And what we see here is like the expanded distributed property of division. I really don't get why they would ever have you do it this way, but let me show you the quick trick to getting problems like these correct. So what you do when they take these and they start expanding them out, I don't, is you would say, um, you take this one and you expand it out. So 864 becomes 800 plus 60 plus 4, okay, divided by 24, divided by 24, okay? And then you're going to take each one and distribute it with the 24. So 800 divided by 24 plus 60 divided by 24 plus 4 divided by 24, which would end up being a fraction. Why? I don't know, but this is how you do it. Okay, just take it, expand it, and then distribute it. It's using the distributive property to solve it. I bet you see one like this on the test, so study it. So our answer would be D. All right, last one is example number five. It says, aren't you glad company, <laughs> aren't you glad company distributes oranges to local grocery stores? One grocery store receives a total of 684 oranges total, which are sorted equally. That sounds a lot like division. 
sorted equally into 18 containers. How many oranges were in each container? And explain how you solve this problem. So this is an open response item. I'm going to show my work over here. And I'm going to write my answer inside the box. So here we go. So we know that there was a total of 684 oranges and they were sorted equally into 18 containers. So we have 684 divided into 18 containers. Okay, I am, I'm gonna do the partial products method with partial product, partial quotients method with this one, just so you can see it illustrated. Okay, so 18, how many 18s can I take out of 684? Well, I know that I can take 20, and that would give me 360. So I'm going to subtract that. 4, 2, 3. Okay. Um, then I know I can take out 10. I can't take out 20, but I can take out 10, which would give me 180. Subtract. This becomes 12, 4. All right. And now I'm kind of down. So it's a little bit under maybe 8. You see 18 times 8. It's like getting me close. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 1 is 8. Plus 6 is 14. Perfecto! So 8 gets me that 144 with 0 remaining. So this is the way that you would do partial quotients. And then you add these up. So 20 plus 10 plus 8 would give me 38. So how many oranges were in each container? 38. How did I do it? Well, I used partial quotients to solve it. <laughs> okay. Um, each container had 38 oranges. I solved this problem by dividing 684 divided by 18 using the partial quotients method. Okay, that's all you need. YouTubers, awesome fifth graders, teachers, parents, tutors, whoever is viewing this, just if you happen to stumble through it, it's been nice hanging out with you for a little bit. Um, this is where I leave you with a motivational message. Here it is for today. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. For instance, after I finish recording these videos, I'm going to go for a run. Because I've really been slacking on the working out and I can feel it. So I'm going to make sure that I get my run in today. And I know that my future self in like 45 minutes will thank me tremendously that, that I went. He'll huff and puff and say, why did you do that? But it'll be good down the road. Um, so what is it that you are going to do today that your future self will thank you for? Write your comments in the description in the comment box below. Let me know what you chose to do today. And um, I'll give you a thumbs up, dude. All right, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks so much for coming today. I'm so grateful for you. Bye, guys.